Hey everyone. So this video is all about cake, not the food cake, but the build orchestration tooling for .NET for C Sharp actually. So C in cake stands for C Sharp, just like in F Sharp, you've got fake, you've got, I think it's Ruby, you've got rake. So there's this eight pattern, you've got make, false, C and C++, I think. And I used to use cake quite a long, many years ago, but for some reason I stopped using it. And I've just started using it again now and it's really I'm starting to remember the benefits and the reasons why I used to use it so for example the past few years I've done a lot of Azure DevOps using the YAML files and the whole um, I make a change in YAML push it to git wait for a build agent to pick it up wait for that build to start just to discover that I've made a mistake with some indentation in the YAML file start again so it's quite a slow process where with cake i can run it all locally and it's c sharp which i'm a big fan of c sharp it's got lots and lots of extensions for lots of things like making rest rest requests entity framework stuff interacting with docker azure aws it's just got lot hundreds of extensions and yeah i really like it so let's check it out so this is the website and what we're going to do, we're just going to follow the get started guide and I'm going to talk through what I'm doing. So if we click on get started, we've got these two main entry points, I guess, setting up a new cake.net tool project and setting up a new cake frosting project. And we're going to look at both. So if we start with a cake.net project, and this is kind of, you end up with like a dot cake script where the frosting project is a .NET project, which we'll see in a bit. So if I just follow the instructions, I'll zoom in a little bit more. Then the first thing we need to do is run this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open VS Code. And so that's an empty directory. If I run that command now, then this is going to create a config file, which is JSON. It's just this. Then it says to run this, which is just a .NET tool. It's still on the um, .NET tooling. So if I run this now, what we'll notice is that this file's been changed and it's added .NET cake. This file goes in source control, so you don't need to keep on doing this. This is a one-time thing for your project. The next step is just to create your cake, build.cake. So I'll go to VS Code, I'll create a new file, and I'm just going to copy this in. Oh, not there. There. So the way Cake works is that rather than like a PowerShell script where you've got just a series of commands, Cake has a series of tasks, which you can kind of think of them like a method that does one thing. So in the example they've given, they've got a clean, which should just clean a directory. They've got a build task, which runs .NET build. And there's a test task, which runs .NET test. And the format of each of these, we can see that we've got the task with a name in it. You can have some criteria. So you can see this predicate is saying, if the user of this script has passed in rebuild on the command line, then it's, it will execute this, otherwise it won't. And this doesn't have criteria. You'll notice that some of these have is depends on. So with a PowerShell script where it runs one line at a time, one command at a time, these the order of these tasks don't really matter. It makes sense to put them in a, a logical order, but that doesn't determine the order they run in. So you can see build is dependent on clean, test is, is dependent on the build task. So a quick example of this. So you've got a task that depends on a task that depends on a task. So this is the example test depends on build, depends on, depends on clean. And even though the arrows are going in this direction, the, the order of execution is going from left to right. Another example might be a Docker build. So a Docker push, you obviously can't push an image that you haven't built yet. So Docker push depends on Docker build. So cake builds this dependency graph and it knows the order it should do things. 
I've opened this up in VS Code, and VS Code actually does have quite a nice extension for Cake. This one, and it adds like linting, IntelliSense, and all this kind of what you'd expect. So if I go back to the Cake script and just delete a character, then you can see that we get some squigglies, and if I mouse over, we get an error. And then you also get the IntelliSense goodness. So what we're going to do, we're going to just give this a go. So if I create a new project, if I just do .NET new console, yeah, and blah, let's just call it blah. And I'm going to say .NET new X unit. So do some tests as well, blah.test. And uh, let's create, an, so my directory looks like this. Let's create a new solution. And let's add blah to it. And let's add test to it. So now we've got a folder structure. We've got the blah project, which is a console application, which says hello world. We've got a tests, which will have an empty test, but that's fine for now. We've got um, an archaic. Oh, and an SLN and the cake stuff. So yeah, blah. Console.write line. And an empty test. So if we look at the cake file, obviously these paths are wrong, but let's run it anyway, see what happens. Going back to the documentation, we can see that the last step it tells you about is to say run .NET cake. So I'm going to run that. I've got an alias dn for .NET, but that's the same thing. And we get a nice, friendly error message. Project file does not exist, which we knew that was going to happen. So I just need to change this for blah.sln. Same goes here. I'm, I'm going to delete the clean. Not a lot bothered about clean. Um, and is dependent on. That's going to fail if I don't get rid of that. Oops, what did I just do? I pressed some keyboard shortcut I don't know what I pressed. Uh, I actually don't like these comments. We know the tasks. We don't need that. Let's just make it a bit smaller. Cool, so we've got the build, tests. I think that should work. Let's clear the screen, let's try, and then do... Project file does not exist. Oh, I, I did .NET, new, .NET SLN new in the same folder, so it's called it, whatever this folder name was called, so that's just cake test. Okay, not blah. And we see we've got a nice output. Super simple. It's told the timings. It's the, it's all green. We've got. Um, it tells you that no one test passed. None failed. Obviously, in this case, the test didn't do anything, but you get the idea. So yeah, works quite well. If we quickly quickly look at extensions, so if I go up to the top and click on extensions, then we can see if I scroll down, seven zip. Some lots up there. Some REST, um, HTTP stuff, EC2, AWS, a bunch of AWS stuff, Azure, Azure DevOps. Uh, I'm not going to keep on going. There's hundreds of them, but there's there's lots for NT Framework, Docker, you got Curl. Uh, I feel I want to keep on going, but uh, Discord. So you get the idea anyway. So now what we're going to show is if we go back to, I mentioned that there was the frosting. So sometimes I'm a big rider fan, so I want to do, especially if you've got tasks that have more logic in there, I would rather be editing in rider than VS Code. It's a very good extension, but there's a bit, it's, you've got a bit of latency. Oh, that's not even picked up the arrow then. I'm not sure why, but you can see it's, it's not complete. It's, it's not the experience you would get in rider. So let's do Rider as well then. 
or not rider, sorry, frosting, frosting project. So following the instructions. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if I go into VS Code and I'm going to delete that config directory, I'm going to keep blah and blah tests and just get rid of the cake file. And now I'm going to follow the instructions. So this is going to install the template. So you know the .NET CLI, you can do, uh, you've got the whole .NET new different project templates. This is going to install the cake frosting template. Now that's installed, I can use it. So we can, if I copy .NET new cake frosting, just in the same way as before I did .NET new console or .NET new X unit. Um, that's done it in the same directory, which that's fine. It's great to, so it's great to follow the called build. So we've got build, and then we've got this. I am going to open the Cipwin Rider. Um, so if I do CD build, oh, not that, not blah build. Oh, <clears throat> CD build. build. Um, and then stop the CS proj. Okay, so that's loaded up in Rider. I've got the program. And what this does is, um, you've got the main entry point and pet hate of mine, I'm gonna change that to an expression body member, a bit cleaner. We've got a program.cs, we've got a build context, which I'm gonna put into a new file. So move that to build context.cs, which defines like the arguments and, and you can, this is where you can set up the arguments. And this is actually used in the other files, which we'll see in a sec. We've got a hello task and we've got a world task. This example shows that the, you can have a non-async and an async. So you can choose which one you want to do. So if I just move those into another file, I'm going to move world task into another file. Uh, we've got a default task as well. <laughs> and the default task is kind of like the entry point. And you can see this is, is dependent on something, which is world task, which is dependent on hello task, which very familiar based on what we saw before in the build.cake file. This same concept of task depending on other tasks. So what we're going to do is, um, if I'm going to del delete the world task, I'm going to take the hello task, I'm going to rename that to build task. And rename the file as well. Uh, uh, it has renamed the file, that's cool. And you can see it's passing in this context. And so you can use context log. If I make this a bit bigger so you can see it, you can do context dot so you can get the arguments so you've got a bunch of stuff in the context which you can use or you can just call so this is build dot net build net build and then just like we did before we'd have to say the what did we call it and uh, the Kick test. Get rid of that, and let's make this an expression body as well. So that's quite small. We don't need that diagnostic. So you could do logs that we saw before. Um, I need to call it build. And then if I duplicate this now, and I'm going to create a test project, and then we can do test task. And then this would be .NET test. And move that to its own file. And we need to make this is dependent on build. Is it, I don't think it is that actually. I think it is um, type of build task. And 
default task is now failing because there isn't a world task that wants to be test task. Okay, so if we run this now, and I'll do this from the command line. Um, I think after the box, when we ran the template, we got a build.ps1. So let's just go for that. I think that internally just does... Oh, that failed. Um, that's just does .NET run the project. And it can't find cake.slm, cake test, even though that's in the current folder. So it might because, oh, it does not exist. Maybe I have to go back a directory. Nothing just works, does it? It should support forward slash. Let's try that. Oh, that was talking about the build. There we go. Okay. It was doing it from the build folder. But we can see that the same concept applies. It's pretty much the same output. Well, it is the same output. So this just gives a bit of more rider. Um, you can create extra classes that do logic and various things like that. So it's quite nice. So hopefully that gives you an idea of Cake. As I said, there's lots of extensions, lots of benefits. It integrates with Azure DevOps, with GitHub Actions and various things. And if you're a podcast listener, Mattis Carlson, one of the main contributors from almost from the very start, he joined me on the podcast and we had a really long chat about Cake. So that was a really good episode. And the podcast is available on all major podcast apps as well. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that too. So hopefully that was useful and if you enjoy the video, please remember to click like and subscribe down below and I'll include links in the description. And if you've got any work colleagues or friends that are interested in this kind of stuff, please let them know too. Okay, see you in the next video.